Here on BBC One, in the tough and rough, risky world of debt collecting, it's no place for the faint-hearted at the sharp end. Wendy, I know what you're going to say. Not another letter from my mother. Well, hard lines, lady. Since your father left us to pursue his career as a pillock, I've had to write enough for two. And don't think it's easy to find the time. I have to try and build up this ratty business. I've taken on a man named Carmichael, who looks like an abandoned mattress, but is kind to animals. I didn't send you to that fancy school just to be someone of this door. I haven't got it, you bloody bitch! Woman, you can't go through life on personality alone. All right, I'll be the one you're calling on. You knock on my door. Knock, knock. No answer. Well, then what? You knock louder. Knock, knock. Still no answer. Well, it's not the end. So, you make a note in your book. How are you going to make a note in your book? I'll make a little sign. I'll know what it means. All right. We'll try another house. No, not there's nobody in. Knock and see. Knock, knock. Who is it? A uh, forest collection agency. Wrong. You shout that at some of these houses and they'll be out the back door. Remember, you want the money. You don't get points for scaring them away. Whatever the amount they give you, you have to give them a receipt. This is the receipt book, the book you'll be carrying. We'll write the receipts out, you just have to sign it. He knows numbers and he can sign his name. Uh, and I'd like to keep that our little secret. There'll be something of a dent in business confidence if word gets out that I'm employing somebody that can't read. I shan't tell anybody. Well, he won't and I sure as hell won't, so I'll know it's you. Hey, I didn't ask for this job, you know. You offered. I know. I want somebody built like a barracks. You don't have to be a PhD. What's a PhD? Doctor of Philosophy. How do you know things like that? I know the length of the Mississippi. I know the common and Latin names of most British birds. I understand the workings of the internal combustion engine. I can hang a door. A fellow you can keep. I don't go that big a bundle in Hamlet, to be honest. Personally, and this is just the opinion of a non-reader, I much prefer King Lear. Your mouth's hanging open. Are you going to find your way about the streets? Well, at first with difficulty. A map's no good to me. I can't read the street names, but I've got a good memory. I'll learn. And what do we do in the meantime? It's all on the tapes. Names, addresses, how much they owe. Now, every time you leave a house, you just listen to the tape and it'll tell you how to get to the next street. Now, the first one's in that street there, and the second one is five doors further along. Number three is two streets farther on, on the right-hand side. All right, give us the papers. What do you need the papers for? Well, just because I can't read doesn't mean to say I have to go around looking like a muffin that can't read. Thank you. Right, Mr. Henderson. 
What we're going to do about these ideas? Mr. Henderson, we've been wondering at the office. Face. Uh, Mr. Henderson, what are we going to do about Henderson? That? Never heard of him. Not here, mate. Nobody of that name. Oh. I thought it was, um... Wrong house, aren't you? Already. It can, it can be in trouble already. Put the files in me. What now? You've only been on your own two minutes. You are not going to ring me every time there's nobody in. Well, what you do is you go back until there is somebody in. Are you sure there's nobody in? I mean, they're not past hiding, you know. Have you peeked through the letterbox? Well, it's the eyes and ears of the collector's world. Look, look, I have got to go to court. If there's nobody in, you just go to the next house. It should be back before I finish at court. Keep him here. Come in, what? <sighs> Clean the windows, both of you. This place is a disgrace. Tired, Celia. Touch of the old knackered. You know what you look like. You look like a woman with too much on her plate. How long do you think you're going to last? In competition with me? We'll have to find out, won't we? Got some ex bouncer working for you now. You think that'll make any difference? You'll get him hurt, Celia. It's not necessary. You're a worker, you're a grafter, I know that, but you're on a loser here. I admire you. Really. Tell you what I'll do. You sell me the business, I'll keep you on as manager. Just leave me alone. You ought to think about it soon. Hang on a minute, I've got something burning. OK, crisis over. What can I do for you? Uh, Mrs Lorna Wilkinson. Not anymore. Oh, the Lorna's right, but Wilkinson was his name, and I don't want any more of that. It's the money, isn't it? Uh, yeah. you better come inside. There'll be 33 neighbours' faces behind them curtains. Going, Have you got bones for brains? You smash my headlights, you moron! You want to be careful what you're saying. It's libel, is it? Oh, tell that to that policeman. You're mad, bitch. You've got it coming. He's behind all the time with his payments. All the time. I mean, talk about consistent. 
one thing you can rely on is you can't ever be relied on. The bills just keep coming in. And you know how easy it is to get into debt. Yeah. I've been there. I knew you had. You've got such a sympathetic face. But listen, it's not a problem. I can get the money. I've got this friend who runs a pub in Woodley area. We'll get the money. Oh, uh, we'll have to go in your car, because mine's off the road temporarily. I don't have a car. I thought everybody had a car. Nope. Not compulsory. Never mind. We'll get a taxi. Oh, it's no good. They've cut me off. We'll use the phone box down the street if it's not been vandalised. So, uh, be a pet, will you, and nip down to the phone box and order us a taxi while I get something decent on. Who is it? It's the bloody bitch again. And this time I've got time to argue. No, either we talk, love, or I'm camping right here on your doorstep. Everybody's calling me bitch today. I wonder why. Both headlights? Both. Am I covered? Leave it with me. I'll have to confer. Give us a ring. See what you can do without hiking me premiums up to something astronomic. This is a criminal offence. You should really be seeking redress through the court. There's no way I can prove it. Well, don't look so nervous. You're a giant company. I keep seeing you advertising assets with so many noughts it looks like a length of ring fence. All I want is a couple of headlights. Leave it with me. Where's Carmichael gone? I told you to tell him to wait here. He's not gone anywhere. He's not back yet. What the hell can he be doing till this time? Right. Oh, love. What's wrong? It's Wendy. She's all right. But it seems she's causing trouble at school. Uh, Crystal, go and get yourself coffee and a cake, will you? What kind of trouble at school? Well, they wouldn't say much on the phone. But it seems she's been absent. Absent? For how long? I'll kill that little madam. I'm going to ring that school. I'll find out what's happening. Wait for some shop in many minutes. Come on, I'll go and see my friend. Why don't I just wait here and watch this meter go round? Huh? Come on, you can tell him how much I owe. Well, how is it that three of your girls are able to sneak out to a pop concert and not get back till God knows what time in the morning? I am not making excuses for it. In fact, I'll kill her when I get there. Yes, I am coming. I want to see her. Tomorrow, then. And I want some explanations all round. Is she all right? She won't be when I get there. You think they're safely in school, and there she is out half the damn night. Anything could have happened to her. On top of which, I've lost Carmichael. How's he doing? Great, if you want to know the length of the Mississippi. Are you sure you did the right thing? I mean, you don't know much about him. He's the only one I can find who has to work for peanuts. I'm paying off the instalments on his debt, and that and a bit of spending money is all he gets. Well, I don't know I like him living here in the office. Well, he's nowhere else to go. He trashed his caravan because of me. I need him, Mother. I need his muscle. They smashed my headlights this morning. What? Anyway, I promised to read to him. Take your bloody up, you slut, and don't come back here pestering for money. It may be a bloody fool, but it's not that much of a bloody fool. It'd be a bloody fool if he didn't go astray married to a bat like you. Clear off if I see your slutty face again, I'll have police on you. He said you were bad tempered and undersexed. You little trollop! Come on, never mind that old cow. Get in and we'll go and see me other friend. <laughs>
Johnson. It's about the money, isn't it? Yes, it is, Mrs. Johnson. Well, come in. I don't want my husband to know. He's out in the garden. He doesn't know. I don't want him to know. He mustn't know. I did send you letters, Mrs. Johnson, asking you to call at the office. It would have been the best way. I know. I'm sorry. We just I haven't known which way to turn these last 14 years. 14 years? This debt's only six months old. Oh, I know. I wouldn't have done it, but we expected the court hearing to be over by then, or I wouldn't have done it. We've never been in debt in our lives. Oh, it's for quite a small amount, Mrs. Johnson. He mustn't know. It was for the shortwave radio that I bought him. He likes to listen to foreign places. We don't go far. He's had it so rough for so long. It's, it's the first time we've ever bought anything on credit. I know it was a gamble, but after all those repeated delays, we really did believe that that last time the court would actually hear and decide our case. I think you'd better tell me about it, Mrs. Johnson. There's every possibility we can come to some sort of an arrangement. Well, I'd love to tell somebody, but I'm, I'm terrified he'll come in and see you. He's got absolutely as much on his plate as he can handle. Wouldn't you rather come to the office? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Be uh, it's mounting up. Oh, worry, worry, you'll get the fizzing running. Mrs. Johnson, I am so sorry. I got held up. Uh, any messages? Nothing. Is Carmichael back yet? Not yet. Will you go through there, Mrs. Johnson? Uh, can we have two coffees, please, Crystal? Uh, do you take sugar, Mrs. Johnson? Uh, no, thank you. My husband was a builder's merchant. The business has been in his family for a long time. Was a builder's merchant. He's no longer in business, Mrs. Johnson. Not for 14 years. It's, uh, it's 14 years since we've had the trouble. Since you... we've had this court case hanging over us. You've been waiting to get to court for 14 years? Yes. But why is it taking so long? <sighs> That's what we keep asking. All we get told is that one party or another has uh, applied to the court for an extension of time. An extension of time after 14 years? We couldn't believe it either. Not at first. We couldn't believe that anybody, no matter how big, could uh, use the law like that. Well, it's difficult to believe. Who are these people? They're insurance companies. We're caught oh. between two insurance companies. Right. And what happened? An accident. People injured. One of our lorries delivering a, a load of concrete blocks to a building site. One of the bundles slipped from the crane. Three men were injured. Legally, of, of course, we were regarded as being at fault. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll wait for the next race. If he gets a winner, he'll be in a much more generous mood. Our insurance paid the first claim that came in. Two more claims followed fairly shortly afterwards, but by this time, our insurance company had found themselves a way out. They'd made their own investigation of the accident and discovered that at the time that the blocks fell, our driver was not actually operating the crane. 
In other words, he didn't actually have his finger on the button. He was checking safety at the unloading end. He, he couldn't be in two places at once. But the insurance company informed us that uh, they no longer had any obligation in the matter. Well, we didn't think this was right. My husband took the view that our driver was still in charge of the operation, e even though he had delegated one part of it to somebody else. All the man had done was to ask someone to put his finger on a button for a minute while, while he went and checked something else. But the insurance company wouldn't budge. The two other claims came in against us and, and we had to pay. Personally, we, we had to sell the business and pay. It wiped us out. Oh, I can imagine. My husband began to take steps to sue our insurance company. They responded with a counterclaim that we owed them the full amount of the first compensation claim that they had paid on our behalf. They said we owed them the full amount. Well, by this time, of course, it was much, much more than we had. The next thing we knew, they, they had my husband declared bankrupt. But can they do that? They did it. But the insurance company claimed that because we couldn't meet the full amount they said we owed them, they had no alternative. The neat thing about this was, as we soon discovered, that um, as a bankrupt, my husband was no longer able to sue anybody. Sold the house and, uh, and and moved into the smaller place. My husband had the crane taken to pieces by experts and examined, and they found a manufacturing fault. If we could get to court, we had a good chance of proving that the accident was the result of a faulty crane. Not now. The threat of this brought in another insurance company who were representing the manufacturers of the crane. My husband couldn't sue, being a bankrupt, so, um, I started proceedings. Uh, against who? A against both insurance companies. And the legal departments of these two companies have been playing ping-pong with you for 14 years and keeping you out of court. Yes. <laughs> Every time a date is fixed, it gets postponed. But why? Why are they doing this? Oh, because neither of them are in a hurry to, to get to court. I think each side knows that it's at fault. Each side knows that... When they get to court, it's going to cost them money. Substantial money. I should hope so. The cheapest way out for both of them is just to keep stonewalling. I think they've, they've decided to wear us down. All the way down. But is that possible? It's been possible for 14 years. Can you imagine what that does to you? My husband can't start another business. But we've no capital anyway. He's worked as a labourer. He's worked on building sites. I've watched him get more and more tired, more, more worried. I've watched him become an old man. I think it's terrible. The last time they fixed a date, I felt sure that finally this must be it, and so I, I bought him a shortwave radio. He likes to listen to um, aircraft and foreign places. And I just wanted to give him a little gift. And they postponed that date too? Yes. <laughs> we rang the court to find out why. They said um, one of the party solicitors had appointed a new barrister who needed time to prepare his papers. After 14 years? Unbelievable. I swear to you, it's true. That, that's how it's been. Two organisations as big as those insurance companies against someone the size of my husband. Oh, they'll have such a string of qualifications, but... You wonder if there's a human being there at all. Have they fixed a new date for the hearing? Yes. The 26th of this month. All right. So if you could just persuade your client, Miss Forrest, to hold on until after the 26th, when we shall know much better what our financial position is going to be. We can do that, Mrs Johnson. There's no problem there. What is it? What does he want? A medal? He wants some money. He's got a taxi waiting downstairs. 
He came by taxi? You've got a taxi waiting downstairs. I'm a bit short. I'm sure we can come to some arrangement, Mrs Johnson. I'll uh, speak to my client and we'll wait to hear from you after the 26th. And I wish you luck with everything. You'll catch it, you will, travelling by taxi. Don't talk to me. I'm dead. Thanks for coming, Mrs Johnson. Thank you, Thanks very much. OK. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. How much? You don't let people lead you by the nose. If you want the truth, she seemed like a nice girl. And you don't believe everything they tell you. If you're going to survive in this business, Carmichael, you have got to learn judgment. Oh, don't ask me for judgment. I'm puzzled by the entire universe. Well, you shouldn't be. You've just been round the damn thing by taxi. I stayed with her. I thought I was going to get the money. You've got to learn to be strong, Carmichael. I know you're a soft touch for furry little animals, but you've got to learn not to melt every time some little bimbo flashes her eyelashes at you. I'll work it off. You're damn right. Yeah. Oh, I'm there. Yeah. Went on forever. We are getting a more inventive class of hard luck stories. I thought I was going to be in there all day. Oh, well, did she like her headlights? She went potter. <laughs> I'll bet she did. No, she went really potter. Eh? What the hell is this? Foot pump. She did it with a foot pump. You let her smash my headlights with a sodding foot pump. I grabbed her, didn't I? I stopped her doing the second one. That was heroic. Did you thump her? You've told me never to thump her. Shows how much I know, doesn't it? On the other hand, we could put the frighteners on him she's got working for her. I mean, we've got to stop this lark, otherwise, before we know where we are, we have got a credibility problem. I couldn't duff an ear on it. There was police all over the place. Well, they didn't stop her breaking my bloody headlights, did they? Get in the car. You? Have had them fixed? Yeah. Bill for two headlights. See what you can do for I'm, me. Uh, I'm not so sure. I've uh, been on the phone, I've talked to my people, and they're not too happy about it. Do you think I'm happy about it? It, uh, it looks to us like you could be in a situation here. This could happen again. Let's not worry about the future. If I want my fortune telling, I'll go to Madame Zaza. Let's just think of all the premiums I've paid and see what you can do for me. I'll try. I but... wish you would. Because I'd hate to think that behind all these big city officers, that's who we've been dealing with, Madame Zaza. I take this to mean you're not going to read to me. Don't push your luck. Who is it? Why don't you open the damn door and find out? Temper woman. You just stand there and look guilty. Oh, just what I need. Oh, I see. You just took one look at those long legs and you just knew she was reliable about money. What do they want? They want money. She's late with a payment. How much? Twelve pounds. Well, good grief, is that all? What's all the song and dance here? Plus a taxi. I'm not paying for your taxi. Not my taxi, hers. Is that right? I had to take a taxi. Give her the money. There ain't a problem, you see. You don't have to come banging on people's doors. I'm happy to know that. Here's the receipt for the taxi. Satisfied? Thanks. You're not as nice as he is. That's the most comforting thing I've heard today. 
under the impression that she can get away with breaking my headlights. You mean we're going to teach her different? Oh, I think I'd like that. Preferably very soon. It's the wrong house. It's not. It is the wrong house. The right house. This is not the Henderson house. This is the Henderson house. I gave you the name and number. It's on the tape. Oh, the bloke that answered the door says there's no Henderson here. And you believed him. Oh, I'm supposed to go around not believing people. It's a crummy business, you It's a crummy world we're in. Not entirely. Oh, there must be a bit I missed. So you brought your mother with you this time? You have wasted my time, his and your own, Mr Henderson. Now, can we just please have the instalment? It's a pity you've got nothing better to do. We have. I don't suppose you care if we don't eat for a week. Not a lot, Mr Henderson. That's the truth. You can't fool me with this hard nosed doo doo, you know. I'm supposed to think you're sponge cake inside. Shall we go back to the car? You can tell me how hard I am in the car. Yeah, crust. All the way through. Tell me again about it being the wrong house. And unforgiving. Do you want me to drive? Why should I want you to drive? You should terrify me at the wheel. Get in the car. Yeah, it's about your outstanding debt to Mrs Johnson. Yeah, well, this one looks collectible. It's just a question of when. Uh, the Johnsons have a court case on the 26th of this month, which should uh, much improve their financial situation. So, I'm recommending no action till after that date. Thank you. I'll be in touch. Bye. Who wants a sticky one? Is there any other kind? Uh, thank you. I'll be a Claire. I'm not sure you should be feeding me. Don't think I've made the cake list. Give him a bun. Thanks. I hope you didn't want this one. No. Don't like anything great. Unless it's got long legs. What do you believe in, Celia? What kind of a question is that? Well, what sees you through the day? What keeps you going? I need to earn a living. No, you must believe in something. I believe you're dropping crumbs. You don't think about these things? Not usually in the office, no. I do. I think about these things all the time. Just a plain damn interesting. I believe in Save the Whales. I believe in work. And I believe in rules. What? That's it? Just rules? You don't believe in anything else? Well, rules would do for a start. If we had any. Just rules. What else is there? That's what I'd like to find out. I think it'd be in everybody's mind, but... See when you ask them. Look at you as if your flies are undone. You're talking through your bun. You can't go around asking people what they believe in. No. Would you believe in two duck eggs and a Fort Capri? I think they're watching the office. I've got to drive to school to see my daughter. I'd better come with you. Yeah, I see cars behind. Why would they be following us? Is there something I should know? Not the foggiest idea. Unless he doesn't care for having his Jaguar headlights smashed. 
you smashed his head like. Seemed like a good idea at the time. Here you go again. Your temper. Good idea to lead them straight to your daughter's school. You don't think that. Well, I don't know. You know these people. No, it's no secret where my daughter's at school. Andy Barris knows anyway. There was a time he was almost part of the family. Well, I suppose it comes down to how bad is he? Bad. I'm going to find out what they think they're doing. Have you thought about this? Would you take the advice of a non-reader and stop and think about this? No. That's how it is these days. Nobody we'll listens unless you get qualifications. There's two of them. There's two of us. Why are you two morons following me? Right. I'm going to take down your number, and if you keep following me, I'm going to report you to the police. Miss Forrest, do sit down. Thank you. It is Miss Forrest. It seems so improper somehow when addressing the mother of one of my girls. It's Miss. We are not a correctional establishment, Miss Forrest. We work on the assumption that our girls are not normally impelled to escape. How long were they gone? Several hours. How did they get back? And what time did they get back? They won't say how. They returned quite late. How late? I believe it was around 2 a.m. What was she doing till that time? She won't say. That pop concert was miles away. That means they must have thumbed a lift there and a lift back. Now, that really gets up my nose, Mrs Hemstock. The thought of my daughter hitching at night when she should have been safely here in school. It's not something we like very much. Quite frankly, your daughter is a problem. We suspect that Wendy is capable of much higher academic standards than she achieves. She seems unwilling to work. She remains disrespectful towards my staff. She has no school spirit. She rejects every attempt to win her over. We are coming to the conclusion that your daughter is a disruptive influence. We think it might be better if you removed her from the school. Now you hold it right there. Just you hold the phone. Don't you look down your nose at me, Mrs Hemstock, just because I've got laddered tights and my hair's a mess. 
I pay my bills. I care about my daughter's future. That's why she's here. And now you tell me she's becoming an influence. Not for the better, I'm afraid. The whole idea of paying these fees is to ensure that my daughter absorbs the ideas of this school. And now you're sitting there telling me that this school's absorbing the ideas of my daughter. Do you really want to make that pathetic admission in public? No, I want to see my daughter. And I want to get to the bottom of this now. Let me stop you walking fast. You're school, you know. Who are you? I think more people should ask themselves that. What are you doing here? And that. Have I got any blood in my back? Just check and see if I've got any blood there, will you? Come along, girls. Back inside. Shut it! You don't like it here? I keep telling you that. And I don't give a damn. You're 16 and you're arrogant. And like all arrogance at 16, it's based on ignorance. Don't open your mouth. Your opinion at 16 with a head full of punk and similar garbage does not qualify for equal time. It may be good that you don't like it here. Because the single most important lesson you're going to learn is that life keeps coming up with situations that we don't like but that we have to face. Either here and now or later with more pain, lady, you're going to find out that the world does not accommodate itself to you. Look at me. Standing there looking sullen is not an intelligent adaptation to life. You look a mess. I know. And that's another thing about life. There's more to it than I look. You have to come with a boyfriend who can hardly get out of the car. He's so drunk. You know better than that. The other girls might have made that mistake, but you know better. Who is he? You're the one who's on trial here, lady, not me. Mr. Carmichael is neither my boyfriend, nor is he drunk. You look like you've been in a fight. Yes, well, that's just an impression you get, because I've been in a fight. And I don't want another one with you. Look at me. Not like that. I'm not your enemy. I might be an obstacle in the way of some of your dafter dreams, but that's not at all the same thing. Debt collecting. Don't tell anybody. But tell them you're an insurance. Yes, well, what I've learnt today about the insurance companies, I don't think that's a promotion. I'm sorry if I embarrass you. But about my occupation, I've no choice. Now, you have a choice. I put you in a decent environment, but you, you seem to prefer the CD. You're good looking for it. It's only a pop concert. It's not the music! It's the appetite for the gutter. There's a lot of it about. I was hoping to cushion you from it. You all right? Are you all right? I'm fine. Like a dream. Yeah, that's just when you need one. Not dressed to go any place. Now what? Have you get any money?
Christmas forest, didn't it? I came to tell you there's no pressure for the money. I mean, whatever else is wrong, there's no pressure for the money. I've spoken to the people and they're willing to wait till after your court hearing. What court hearing? We were informed this morning that it's been postponed again. Till when? Nobody seems to know. Next calendar is December. That's not too long. And they'll change that one. Why not? They've changed all the others. Can they keep on doing that? They have done for 14 years. This time it was too much for my husband. I should have known it. I should have watched him. Just thought he wanted to be alone. Thought he didn't want me to see him cry. He took an overdose. Hello. I, uh, I really did try for you, Miss Forrest. I, I did my best, but, um, they don't like this at head office. You're in a situation. Now, uh, they will pay this amount this time, but uh, your premiums, I'm afraid. So they don't like it at head office? Understandably. Let me tell you a little story about the insurance companies and a spineless legal system. I've just come from the hospital. Losers, winners, all are choosers, all beginners. At the start of the game We're the same, all the same Now the time has come And the difference then You can't cut and run Cause it's sink or swim So go on, make your move Down the street Tired feet Echoes cold and still There must be a someone Somewhere who have space to fill Stay with me, sweet reverie Hold me while you can Hold me till the heartache fades away Introducing the Red Peppers. Has anybody seen our ship? The HMS disgusting. You mucked up the exit. Nobody else did. You did. Well, what if I did? It was an accident, wasn't it? I couldn't help it. It doesn't matter why you did it or how you did it. You did it. All right, I did it. Well, don't do it again. Oh. But then we haven't got a penny for the you-know-what. Joan Collins and Anthony Newley and Noel Coward's bickering Red Peppers, Sunday at 8.35 on BBC One. Now on BBC One, we look back to the splendour of this afternoon's enthronement of the Most Reverend George Carey as the new Archbishop of Canterbury. The commentator is David Dimbleby.